My father was the best storyteller. Every single night growing up, I'd lie in bed awaiting my father to come in and tell me a bedtime story. His stories were incredible. To this day, I'm not entirely sure where he came up with most of his ideas. It seemed like almost every other night, he'd have an entirely new story for me. He would tell me about courageous yet flawed warriors seeking retribution for a heinous crime done to them. He'd speak of mythical worlds that I could only barely comprehend. There would be stories of true love, of failure, of victory, of honor. I'd lay there hanging on to every word as he regaled me with each tale. Eventually, my fatigue would grow too great, and my mind would slip off into a deep, deep sleep. One day, when my father came in to tell me yet another story, I asked him if he could make this one a scary story. He paused for a moment, giving me both a look of surprise and thoughtfulness. Out of all the stories he has told me, none of them had been particularly scary. They were more thrilling and action-packed. He sat there staring out of my window for a few seconds, before turning and smiling to me. Then he began to speak. Those woods, right outside your window, he said. I glanced over to the window and saw the faint trees swaying in the moonlight. I nodded in response. He looked over his shoulder for a moment as if he were about to tell me a dangerous secret. There is something in those woods. When he said this, I felt a chill drift into my room, though it was probably just in my head to be honest. He continued, Every seven years, it emerges from the deep reaches of the woods. It prowls around, crawling on all fours. It searches. It hunts. Its body is like a man's, but longer its arms and legs stretching out at odd angles. Its skin is like coal, which makes it difficult to spot during the night. Its head, long and narrow. But the most unsettling feature this creature has are its eyes. It has multiple eyes, all over its head, like a spider. It uses its multiple eyes to spot its prey in the dark. It creeps around through the night until it finds an unsuspecting victim, usually a drifter or someone unlucky enough to be outside during that time. Sometimes, when it has difficulty finding prey, it will venture into residential areas and search for unlocked windows. If it finds one, then it crawls inside the house and grabs the nearest person it can find. It drags them back outside and into the dark woods where it keeps them for seven years, feeding off them until it's time to re-emerge and hunt once again. I could feel my hands beginning to tremble slightly as I gripped my blanket next to me. My father taking note of this smiled down at me and told me not to worry. He said that as long as I keep my window locked, that I would be safe. He stood up from my bed and walked over to my window. He just stared out of it for a few seconds before checking to make sure it was locked. Just as he was about to shut off my bedroom light and close my door, I asked him if he had ever seen this thing before. He paused for a few moments before a reassuring look crept onto his face. He didn't answer me. He just wished me a good night and shut my door behind him. I remember lying awake for most of that night, staring at my window wondering if I would see that face my father described. A face with multiple eyes staring back at me. Eventually, my eyelids shut, and I fell asleep. While I slept, I dreamt that a shadowy figure had been chasing me. I ran as hard as my legs could carry me, but it was like I was running on a sheet of ice. It wrapped its arms around my legs and began dragging me through the grass. It was pulling me closer and closer to the forest, which was now in the shape of a giant maw. I was screaming, but I could hear no sound coming from my mouth. Then, just as I crossed the threshold, I was jolted awake, and I sat up in my bed screaming. 
It only took a few seconds for me to realize my room had been brightened by the light outside. I felt a weight lift off of my chest as I finally calmed down. Since that night, despite my father telling me new stories every other day, I couldn't help but think about the creature in the woods every time he'd leave my room. Thankfully, the nightmares didn't last very long, and over time, the story faded from my mind entirely. A few years later, my father passed away. He had developed cancer, and after months of battling it, the cancer selfishly won. That year was a dark time for my family. However, with the support of my family and friends, we all managed to pull through it. With each passing year, the grief lessened, but his memory still remained. Then after another few years, during my senior year in high school, something happened. I had gotten home from school and saw that my mom had already left for work. She had been working frequently the last few years to make up for the low income. I offered to get a part-time job to help her out with the bills, but she told me that everything was fine. She said that we weren't in dire need of money, and that working helps take her mind off of things. She also went on to say that I needed to focus on my schooling, so I could get into college and in turn get a good job down the line. Although I understood her reasoning, it still pained me to see her working so much. Regardless, I walked into my bedroom and tossed my bag onto my bed. I pulled out some of my books and set them on my desk. Every half hour or so, I'd split my time between doing homework, studying, and watching TV. Before I knew it, the sky had darkened, and it was time for bed. I shut off my TV, got changed, and crawled into bed. As I laid there, I found it difficult to fall asleep. My mind was restless, and despite my efforts, I couldn't seem to calm my thoughts. I cracked open one of my eyes and saw that the clock on my desk was nearing 2 a.m. by this point. That's when I heard something. A sound which pierced the silence of my room like a knife. It was a tap. A light yet sharp tap echoed around me. My eyes instantly snapped open and I looked over to my window. My blood nearly turned into ice in my veins. Memories of my father rushed into my mind. Memories of the stories he used to tell me. Memories of the thing that lives in the wood behind my house. Its face and body were obscuring most of my window, and if it weren't for the faint bit of moonlight outside, I probably wouldn't have seen it. There was a bunch of movement across its face, like multiple insects crawling on it. Then I realized that they weren't insects. They were its eyelids, opening and closing, looking around rapidly. As I laid there in disbelief, I wondered if I had fallen asleep and this was just a nightmare. Then, I watched as a shadowy limb stretched out towards the base of my window. My mind stopped thinking about whether or not this was a nightmare, and instead I thought about whether or not I had locked my window recently. The sickening sound of the window seal being broken as the glass began to slide up hit my ears. My fight or flight response kicked in, and I rolled out of my bed. I dashed across my room and opened my bedroom door. When I did, the door slammed shut in my face. All of my joints locked up simultaneously as I couldn't believe what just happened. The creature that was just outside my window a few seconds ago was now above me. It had one hand firmly pressed against my door, the other seemed to be stuck against my wall. Its head seemed to twist unnaturally, almost spinning entirely upside down. All of its eyes were focusing in on me. I backed away, wondering what I should do. My bedroom was on the second floor, so if I jumped, I probably would only injure myself. And if I didn't, I'd probably be right where it wanted anyway. Standing right next to my bedroom door was a coat rack my father had assembled for me years ago. I grabbed it and swung at the creature as hard as I could. The sound of an impact and splintering wood resonated around me. A few of the prongs snapped off. The creature had reared back slightly, but that only gave it a moment's pause. What was jarring to me 
was that this thing made no sound aside from the previous window tapping. No breathing. No shrieks of pain. No growls. Even moving around, it barely made any noise. It crawled onto the floor and was closing the distance to me. This forced me back over to where my bed was. It was now taking up nearly half of my room. It lowered its stance, and a second later, it lunged at me. It reached out with its long arms at me. When it did this, I swung the coat rack wildly. The end of the wood connected with its head. It clattered to the floor, and in a flash, I dashed past it. I opened my door and slammed it shut behind me. I sprinted down the stairs and turned on the living room light next to me. Then I stopped, keeping the coat rack aimed up at the stairs towards my bedroom door. Then, suddenly, the front door to my house opened up behind me, and I spun around on my heels ready to strike. I managed to stop myself at the last second, when I saw that it was my mom coming home late from work. She screamed at me and asked me what in the world I was doing. Breathless, I told her something had crawled into my bedroom from my window. She sighed heavily and stormed up the stairs. Despite my protest, she promptly opened my bedroom door. There was nothing there. Just a few pieces of splintered wood and that was it. She scolded me for breaking the coat rack my father had gotten me and told me to go back to bed. After inspecting my room, I found that there was truly no sign of that creature whatsoever. I quickly shut and locked my window tightly. I peered outside of it for a few moments, but it was far too dark to see anything of note. It was safe to say I didn't sleep at all that night. My father used to tell me incredible stories when I was a kid. To this day, I'm not entirely sure where he came up with most of his ideas. But the next morning, as I stared at the large handprint on the outside of my window that had been revealed by the morning sun, I know that at least one of his stories was true.